Hi everyone, this is the video on hyperbolas. Uh, a hyperbola is actually an ellipse that's split open. And um, there's all these new words involved. Um, the key features are foci, vertex, asymptotes, transfer, transverse axis, which is the main axis, conjugate axis was like the minor accidents, and um, the midpoint uh, connecting this, uh, the center is the midpoint of the segment connecting the foci. And then uh, our formula last time with the ellipsis was a squared minus b squared, but now it's c squared. Your c is your foci part, so it's going to be um, a squared plus b squared. So basically, <coughs> you have slopes to your asymptotes. All right, this, this should be a comma there. And um, your transverse axis is the one that the hyperbola opens up, either left or right, or up and down. If it opens up and down, the transverse axis would be the y. In this case, the transverse axis is the x-axis, because it opens up over the x. And the conjugate is just the other axis. Okay, and I think this makes more sense if we do the uh, examples. We're going to do three examples where the center is 0, 0. And here's the information that we have. Um, it's a lot like the ellipse, except it has a negative instead of a plus. Again, we're just splitting the ellipse open. We're going to talk about the slopes of the asymptotes. And remember, slope is really y over what? x, right? In this case, we're going to call it plus or minus. And we're going to do plus or minus here, y over x. And if you notice, you don't have to really memorize these. Because if you if you notice, our y is here. What's under the y? b. So that's why b is on top. In this one, um, a is under the y. And we'll talk about that. And the, the main reason you need to know those is in case they give you a, a problem where they're talking about the transverse or conjugate axis. The foci is very important, and so are the vertices. So, basically, we're going to do basic, simple ones. Um, and it's a little extra steps than the ellipse, but it's not that hard if you get used to the steps. So, the first one we have, we know this is a hyperbola because it has a negative in front of it. Now, my a is under the x. So, a squared is for b squared is 16. Now in this case we have um, c squared is a squared plus b squared. So when we do c squared you just add that and you get 20. Therefore a is plus or minus 2, b is plus or minus 4, and c is going to be the square root of plus or minus the square root of 20 which is in between 4 and 5. All right, so my center is 0, 0, because I don't have an h case. So there's that. On my x, I'm going to do just like we did the ellipse. I'm going to go over 2. The square root of 4 is 2. And on my y, I'm going up 4. And I'm going down 4. OK. Now, this is different than the ellipse. The foci is going to be on the first term. So our first term here has x in it. So it's going to open left and right. So that's the only difference. Now my foci is plus or minus uh, 20, which is in between uh, 4 and 5. So this is 2, 3, 4. So it's right about there. All right, there's your foci. And then I'm going to do it on this side too, the minus part, 2, 3, 4. So it's right there. Now, as far as the asymptotes, what we're going to do is from our center, our asymptotes in this case is y over x. And if you look, in this case, it's, it's going to be b plus or minus b over a. But all I do is look at the y, because you know slope is y over x, right? So 
the square root of 16 is 4, and the part under the x, the square root of uh, 4 is 2. So that's going to be 2. So my slope is 2, the slope of the asymptote. So this is like saying b over a. So we're just going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. All right. And then down, I'll go down and do some more. Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. And then you get used to this. All right. So there's your slope. There's your um, asymptotes right there. Now, I usually don't do this. What I usually do first is I draw a box on the points right in here for the slope. So I went up 2 over 1. Then I draw the asymptotes because it makes the line straighter. And there you go. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. We're going to open left and right because we're starting with x squared. And the vertex is right. Um, wait, we should have gone over a little bit more. So let's go over a little more. Let me, let me fix this real quick. All right, so basically we're going over 2 on the x and up 4 here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So basically... It's this. You go down four to here. And I draw the box right here. It's the same asymptote, so I messed up on my... All right, so there you go. Now, the vertex is right here. The vertex are always on the X part. And so what you notice is that X is two, and the other vertex is X is... Um, it's right here, sorry. The other vertex is negative 2, comma, 0. All right. Now it opens to the right and to the left. And this is without being perfect. And now my foci was in between, what, um, 4 and 5. So my foci, this was 2. Four and five, two, three, four, right here, and right here, three, half. So there it is. Um, I messed up here, so it goes right here. Okay, now there's your foci, so let's write that down. Our foci is going to be on the x, so that's going to be. Um, square root of 20, if you want to write it properly, that would be 2 root 5, comma 0, and negative 2 root 5, comma 0. My transverse axis is here, the x-axis, it's horizontal. My conjugate axis is the y, because it doesn't open up on that. So that's all you need to know on that. And there's your hyperbola. Okay, the next one, I'm going to do the same thing, basically. The y is going up 4. Square root of 16 is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. My x is 3. Square root of 9 is 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Now I'm going to draw a box on this. And then automatically, I get my slope. Because what I'm going to do with the slope is start from my center and just draw from this corner to corner and draw from, just draw an X here. And then that is your asymptote. We'll talk about that in just a minute. The slope of the asymptote is you take your Y, because you know your slope is Y over X. So the square root of 16 is four, square root of nine is three. And then you do your plus and minus. And if you look at this, we can see it. This is going up four, one, two, three, four, over three. One, two, three. So there we have our slope. And now we need our vertices. This, Since y is the start, it's going to open up and down. Our vertices are right here. So that would mean x is 0, 
y is 4. And if you want, we can just put plus and minus 4. Well, let's not do that now. We'll do that in the next one. So the first one would be 4. And the, uh, this vertex down here would be negative 4. Okay, my foci is my c, and I don't have my c. So I'm just going to write a squared equals 16. In this case, we just the a is the first part, and the b squared is the second part. So b squared is 9, and c squared, as you add that up, and 16 plus 9 is 25. So we already know that a is 4. We already know that b is 3, and we already, so c is what? Uh, five. These should be plus and minus. Plus and minus. Okay, so my foci is right here. All right, there. Now, from my vertex, I just kind of draw my hyperbola here. Opens up, and it opens down. Okay. Now my transverse axis is vertical this time because that's where my foci is, because it opens up and down. My minor axis, or, is my, or my conjugate axis, is my x. Now, I think the only thing we forgot is to write down the coordinates for the foci. Well, we know that our c is 5, plus and minus 5, but it goes on the y, on the transverse axis. So that's going to be 0, 5, and 0, negative 5. Okay, the last one is very similar. So we go up 3 for the y and down 3 because a is 3. Uh, if we could do this, we want to go ahead and do this. We could a squared is 9, b squared is 36. So c squared, you just add these two and you get 45. So a is 3. B is 6, and C is plus and minus. And so C is uh, square root of 45, plus or minus, which is in between 6 and 7. Okay, so let's, um, my X part is 6, so I'm going to go over 6 here. Plus 6 minus 6 is the B. 4, 5, 6. Now, I draw my box. As best I can. Now, from here I can automatically get my, draw my asymptotes. So I'm just drawing from here to here. Try to draw a line through that. Go to this one. All right, and then I'm going to draw to this point. This is your plus and minus part. The first one I drew is plus. This is the minus. Now, since y starts, we're opening up and down. And um, let's look at the slope here. The slope is y over x, or um, in this case, a over b. But I just use y over x, so this is going to be what? 3 over 6 which is one half. So I can either just go up three over six, or I can go up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. So there's your slope, and you can also do, um, this is plus and minus one half. You can also go the other way, up one over two, up one over two. All right, now my vertex is gonna be on the Y, so my Y, is going to be um, 0, 3 and 0, negative 3 for the vertices here. Here, My foci is in between square root of 36 and um, 49, square root of 49, which is in between 6 and 7. So we have um, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right about there. That's my foci. And 3, 4, five, six, right about there. And then you just open it, uh, draw it. Let's see. I'll just draw it in red. 
so it's kind of whitish. Let me draw it here. And then go ahead and write your foci, which will be zero, comma. If we want to write this um, properly, this would be three root five, square root of three root five, and zero, comma, negative three root five. And that's all. The next video is going to be hyperbolas with where the center is not zero, zero. Thanks and have a nice day.